You can have a seat, uh, and I'm going to encourage you uh, to grab a Bible or take your Bible app and turn to Matthew 28. Matthew 28 is our text. Uh, if you're in the room and you don't have a Bible, then grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you and turn to page 993. If you're joining us at our Parker campus, then uh, grab one of the Bibles in the table right at the back uh, center of the room and turn to page 993, and you'll be able to follow along with us and see the text that we're, we're looking at. And as always, if you're in the room or at Parker campus, then, uh, and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then take one of those with you because we want you to have the Word of God and read the Word of God. Uh, and, and if you're watching from home and you don't have a Bible and you want one, let us know. We'll mail one to you, bring one to you, uh, because we want everyone to have the Word of God and read the Word of God because we know if you do that, God will change your life. Uh, hey, uh, you think you know someone, and then you discover something about them that just kind of blows your mind, uh, and you're thinking, do I even know you at all? Have you ever had that happen to you? Yeah, okay, a lot, a lot of hands go up. You know, you just think, oh, I, I thought I know you, and I thought I knew you, and I don't know you. Uh, just for, because so, a lot of you don't know me as well as you th maybe think you do, uh, I am officially colorblind, okay? Uh, now, I'm not actually colorblind. I see colors. I'm red-green color deficient, uh, technically, uh, along with about 25% of the men in this room, whether they realize it or not. And, uh, and, and so, uh, and some of you go, what, what colors do you see? Well, let me put it this way. The eight-color crayon box works for me. <laughs> Anything beyond that's a waste, okay? And with the eight-color crayon box, I still read some of the labels, okay? I'm just being honest here. So uh, anyway, Meralda knew that from the time that uh, I was dating because she really thought that I used to dress just to annoy her. And, uh, <laughs> and then once she discovered that it was because I'm handicapped, then she uh, started changing my wardrobe. So, uh, but a few years ago, I made a statement that shocked her to no end. She said, well, what color was it? And I said, it, it was green like peanut butter. <laughs> That's what she did right there. And she's like, I've been married to you over 30 years and I didn't know that you thought peanut butter was green. And I said, well, it really didn't come up in a conversation until now. <laughs> and she was just shocked. She was flabbergasted. And she started asking me what I thought other things were. And I didn't want to tell her that I was really confused when they came out with the UPS commercial that said, what could brown do for you? Uh, <laughs> I never really confessed that one, but uh, now you and everyone else knows. Uh, but uh, you think you know someone. Well, we are delighted that you are part of Calvary. Okay, whether you're in the room or online, I'm delighted that you are with us. And, and here's the thing, we want you to know us. We want you to know Calvary. And, and some of you have been part of Calvary for decades, and you're like, eh, we know it all. And others of you are, are, are new here. Uh, you've only been with us a few months. Uh, but uh, either way, we're gonna take the next few weeks and kind of introduce ourselves, reintroduce ourselves, if you will, uh, we're going to talk about our mission and our core values because we've updated some of those. So some of those who, who think, well, I've been here for decades. I know what's going on. I know what the mission and core values are. And, uh, well, guess what? We've updated some things. So we're uh, going to share that with you. But our point is this. We want you to know Calvary better and decide or decide again that you want to be part of Calvary and, and you really know who we are and where we're going as a ministry. And that doesn't matter if you're joining us online or in Parker or in Havasu. The, the same is true. We want you to know us. So we're doing a series called This Is Us. And, and it all begins with the mission. It all begins with the mission. I mean, Jesus was on a mission. He came into our world to save us from our sins. You know, he, he lived a sinless life, but his mission was to die on the cross, be buried and raised from the dead on the third day so that he could rescue us from sin and death and hell. And, and he was intent on fulfilling his mission. He didn't allow anything to deter him, to distract him, or to stop him from his mission. He had enemies that tried to trap him and trick him and, and deceive him. He had friends who tried to disrupt and delay his plans. Even had a friend who betrayed him as part of the plan. And ultimately, Jesus had to face his own fears, his pain, and his sorrow to accomplish his mission. Jesus was on a mission. 
And once he completed his mission, he gave us our mission. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus said to his disciples, the last recorded words in the Gospel of Matthew, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. To the end of the age. This is Jesus' mission that he has given to you and I. Some people call that the great commission of Jesus to the church. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you actually believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin, that he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then understand, this isn't the church's mission. It isn't my mission. It is your mission as well. It's our mission. And, and, and here at Calvary, we take that, that commission of Jesus and we describe it this way. The mission of Calvary is leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Okay, the mission of Calvary, the reason we exist, is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, if you've been here in any time, how many, of you have heard, how many of you have heard us say that before? Yeah, if you haven't, you didn't raise your hand, you weren't listening then and you're not listening now. Because we say it all the time. Because we take this mission seriously. It's what drives us. It's what directs us. It's what informs our decision making and explains why we do what we do. Because all the time we're, we're doing stuff, we're making changes, we're starting ministries, and people go, why are you doing that? To lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Why did you make that decision? To lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. It's the why behind almost everything. In fact, we believe in the mission so much, we got a tattoo. Well, not me personally, but we put it on the wall out here in front, right? You guys have seen that, right? Some of you are going to go out there and go, there's a mission on the wall? I never saw that before, okay? And don't, don't confess it now if you haven't seen it. It's okay. Uh, but we are uncompromising about this mission. I, I mean, it, it literally is something that, that we'll fight about because of Jesus' command. That command informs us and it informs our essential beliefs. By the way, two of our five essential beliefs are these. First of all, all people are sinners and need the grace of God. We believe that everyone at their heart is a rebel. We have rebelled against God. We have defied God. We have decided to live life our own way. And because of that, it, it disqualifies us from heaven. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 3 said that no one is righteous, not even one of us. Later in the chapter, he says, for, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all natural-born sinners, natural-born rebels. And we know that. You ever hung out with a toddler? <laughs> they embody rebelliousness, right? And deceit. Because you can catch them with their hand in the cookie jar, and they will lie about it. And you're like, I never taught them that. You didn't have to, did you? Because we're, we're natural-born rebels. We're in need of the grace of God. And of course, Paul said in Romans 6 that the wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's the second essential belief I'm going to share with you that informs our mission. Salvation is only through faith in Jesus. Salvation is only through faith in Jesus. The Apostle Paul, uh, uh, talking to a, a guy in Philippi when he was there, he'd, he'd been in jail and, and uh, God worked a miracle and set him free and, and the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Believe on Jesus. There, there's no other answer. In, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Apostle says, look, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead we'll be saved. Okay? Confess Jesus as Lord with your mouth. Believe in your heart in Jesus that God raised him from the dead and you'll, you'll have salvation. And then, of course, let's just go back to the source. Jesus himself said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Jesus. We, we believe that everyone needs to experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus. He is the hope of the world. He is the hope of heaven. He is the hope of forgiveness of sin. And there is no other. 
So, have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Have you confessed Jesus as Lord of your life? Okay, so let me, I'll just ask it again. Have you confessed Jesus as Lord of your life? Yes. Okay, a lot of you said yes. There's some of you in this room, some of you watching, some of you in our Parker campus that haven't yet made that decision. You're thinking about it. You're checking it out. You've, people have asked you about it. Maybe they've harassed you about it. Maybe you've even gone through the motions at church, you know, uh, and, and said that you did, but you know you haven't actually surrendered your life to Jesus. And can I just encourage you, if you've never confessed Jesus as Lord, I mean, seriously, you said, you can have all of me. I give up. Please forgive me. I need you. Would you do that now? I mean, you don't need to keep listening to me because the most important thing you can do is respond to the Holy Spirit as he's calling you to trust Jesus as Savior. Just, just surrender and just go, God, I need you, and I can't do this on my own. I need Jesus to save me. Please do that. And, and he will. Like right now, and, and, and if you do that, if you make that decision that you're gonna go, I'm gonna confess Jesus as Lord, would you tell someone? If you're in, if you're in one of our rooms, would you grab one of the Connect cards and write on there, today I trusted Jesus, and, and put a way to contact you because we wanna follow up with that. If you're in one of the rooms, then, then come up to the, the prayer team after the service and, and say, hey, uh, I trusted Jesus, what's my next step? Or find one of the pastors. We would love to celebrate with you. If you're joining us online and you're making that decision to follow Jesus today, then would you please email us and let us know? We'd love to talk with you and send you some resources. See, salvation is only through faith in Jesus. Now, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the rest of this is for you. Okay, if you're a follower of Jesus, then how are you participating in the mission? How are you participating in the mission? Because the mission is a team sport. Okay? Uh, now, we want to challenge you as a follower of Jesus to look at your life and assess. You and God have a conversation about how you're doing helping the mission. How are you doing in helping to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ? In a moment, I'm going to share about six different ways that you can participate in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, and, and I'm gonna want you to kinda figure out how many ways you're, you're participating in. But first of all, I gotta talk about mission as a team sport. Mission as a team sport, because this is the first weekend of the NFL season. Can you guys tell? Is, is anybody happy about that? All right, I expect to see jerseys, you know, for the rest, yeah, all the way through February. I mean, come on, uh, you know, just uh, go ahead and, and show, your, uh, show your favors. But, but here's the thing, it's a, it's a team sport. And, and how, wait, how many of you are here because you're going like, to have NFL Sunday ticket tomorrow and you got to come on Saturdays? So, okay, it's all right, it's all right. It's a place of confession, we're good with that. So, uh, okay, in football, in case you're clueless about how football works. There's 11 players for the team on the field at a time. And if a team wants to win, how many of those 11 players need to play? All of them. Yeah. So if one or two don't try every play, does that hurt the team? Okay. If, uh, if one of them doesn't even get on the field and they're playing with 10, does that hurt the team? Yeah. You see, the team wins or loses as a team. It doesn't matter how good an individual player is. What matters is how good the team plays. And whatever your team is in football, it doesn't really matter. We don't care because, you know, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll bet later about the, the games. Anyway, so, but whoever your team is, it, you know, you're, you're rooting for the team. You're not rooting for the individual. The only people who root for the individual are the fantasy league players. And that's a whole other conversation. So, the, just like football, the mission is a team sport. The mission of Jesus is a team sport. We are leading people to Jesus. Okay, our mission of Calvary is we are doing this together in Lake Havasu City, in Parker, in, in points all over the United States and actually the world. Did, did you know that our online campus, this is so cool, and, and I'm so proud of you guys online. We have about uh, 32 states regularly represented, and, and I just got this statistic this week. In the last 28 days, we have had visitors from 45 different countries. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? They're cheering for you guys if you can't hear them online. So I hope you guys are cheering for yourselves too. I, I just think that's awesome. 
Now, as a team, let me tell you about how we've done this last year because God's been doing a lot of winning here at Calvary. Uh, you guys gave, we gave over $750,000 to mission causes around the world. I think that's pretty impressive. I applaud your generosity as well. As a team, we celebrated 236 baptisms last year. And since 2020 began, we've had over 400 people get baptized, proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Lord. See, that, that's just, uh, that's miraculous in this day and age. Uh, we, uh, we took almost 400 kids to camp this summer. And you saw the results of some of that tonight. Uh, we have uh, currently 68 life groups with about 1,000 people joined. And you know what? You can sign up to join a life group tonight. Right? In Parker, you guys can sign up to join a life group. And, and we want you to join a life group. Because God changes our lives in those contexts of relationships. So as a team, we are celebrating lots of victories. And that is awesome. But how are you participating on the team? Are you doing your part for the mission? So six ways that I want to share with you. And, and, and honestly, what I want you to do is I want you to listen. And I want you to kind of go, yep, I'm doing that. Nope, not doing that. Doing this one. And, and you and God have a conversation about your life and your participation in the mission of Jesus. Okay, first way that you can participate in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus is passive support. Passive support. You go, that's kind of weird, but let me tell you. Cheering on the mission and contributing money to the mission, that's what passive support looks like. There was a time when, uh, as pastor at Calvary, uh, I had to actually push back against people who were against the mission. I had people actually tell me, hey, there's too many lost people coming to Calvary. And I went, that's a problem? We want people to hear the message of salvation, right? And they're just like, no. I had, I had a person tell me I was too evangelistic. And I said, you know what? I'll take that as a compliment, not as a critique. And I'll only take that rebuke if it comes from Jesus. And I don't think that's coming. Look, but I appreciate the fact that, uh, well, thanks for, thanks for cheering. That was a long time ago, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll take God's approval all the time. But see, here's the thing. I love how we celebrate baptisms. I love the fact that you are rejoicing in life change. And I see it. I don't see anybody at Calvary being upset that we are reaching people with the gospel. I love that. And I love the generosity of our people because you guys keep giving and supporting. And every dollar you give is used to change lives. Whether it's supporting the staff or the buildings or the ministries or the 20% that we give to missions. You see, uh, we're all about life change. And, and by the way, most of you are, are participants in this passive support. And, and if you are in the room or online and you're passively supporting Calvary, I want to thank you for helping us lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Most of you can check the box on that one. You can go, yep, doing that, done. If not, you and God have a conversation. The second way you can participate in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus is by active support. That is helping the mission of Calvary by serving in a tangible way to help make the weekends or the weekday ministries happen. I mean, these are the people who are volunteer, uh, who volunteer weekly or monthly just to, to do all the things that it takes to make ministry happen here. Well, by the way, Calvary travels on our volunteers. We have so many people doing so many different things. There's about 100 plus volunteers needed just to make a weekend happen. And that's just, and Havasu and Parker, it takes a whole bunch because I've been there and watched those amazing people set up and tear down the portable campus week in and week out. And by the way, in Parker, you guys are going to have a building sometime in this next year. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, but these are the people who, who just keep giving and serving. Life group leaders and life group hosts. You guys are, are amazing. Uh, the people who do the tech ministry. I love them because you can't hear me without them. You can't see me without them. You can't see the words. All of it happens because of them. Uh, the, the wonderful people who greet those who come in, our first impressions ministry, do the coffee and the, the, just handing the bulletins and just answering the questions. The, the people who do the children's and student ministries. I already told you, 400 kids at camps. We, we have like 200 plus kids uh, a week. We have 100 junior hires during the week. It's crazy. We, we don't do any of this if we don't have great volunteers actively supporting the ministry. 
And then there's the chairs team and the worship team and all the other teams that are doing stuff during the week at, that we would love to, to say thank you to all of them for, the, for making it happen. And some of you are, are sitting there going, you know, I, I could do that. I could help in one of those ways that he named. If that's the case, if the Holy Spirit right now is telling you, grab one of those serve cards in the seats around you and fill it out and drop it in the offering box or give it to one of the pastors because we'll drop it in the offering box and someone will follow up with you and say, hey, we would love to have you on our team. Come and be a part in whatever way you would like to serve. Uh, by the way, if you're not sure what that looks like, uh, we got some next step classes happening on uh, September 25th. That's a Saturday morning at nine o'clock. We'd love to uh, tell you more about Serve and the other classes that we have at Calvary. Third way that you can participate in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus is promoting the mission. Promoting the mission. I mean, this is our community involvement. I mean, I don't know if you realize this, but Calvary made a decision about 17 years ago that we were going to take Jesus into our community. In other words, we weren't just going to be, hey, come, come to us and check it out. We were going to go and invade their world and get nose to nose and shoulder to shoulder with people who are far from God. And we do that by serving in our community. I mean, there's big projects that you guys hear about, like Serve Our Schools, Fright Night on Main Street, the Christmas Backpacks and Angel Tree, Night to Shine, which is our special needs prom, and, and Teacher Appreciation. Okay, those are the big things. And that's kind of October through April. We do all those different events uh, in that time period. We'd love to have you participate in those. Again, if you want to sign up to help one of those, grab a, a serve card, fill it out, and we'll follow up. But we have these ongoing ministries that, that serve people like Benevolence and Heart to Heart and Calvary Cares and, and people who go out and serve in the community organizations, just blessing people. Uh, and, and I love that. And by the way, this also means the way that we treat people in our community. I, I don't know if you guys realize this, but in our communities, people know where we're from. I mean, they know where we're from. Everybody knows where you go to church. They know what you order when you go to, out to eat, right? Anybody else like me? And they come up and got the usual. <laughs> yeah, see, it, it's Havasu. It's Parker. We, we know that. People know us. They know where you're going to church. So when you show up and you have a smile on your face and you treat people with respect wherever you go, it matters because we can't represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. And that's why when you are kind and generous toward the wait staff, when you are patient and encouraging to the medical staff, when you're not a jerk in the grocery store, or when you drive, um, especially if you've got that Calvary sticker on your car, um, it makes a difference. That's promoting the mission. So if you promote the mission of Calvary uh, and of Christ through serving, thank you. And if you want to, there's the serve cards. You can use them and fill them out, and, and we'd love to have, have, a, have you join us in that. By the way, just for those online, if you're sitting there and you're not in our localities, you're, you're not close by, can I just encourage you to find a way to serve in your community? Uh, I mean, I want you to always represent Jesus with a smile and generosity, but can you just find a place, a, a ministry that's doing something to bless people and go and volunteer and be a part of that? Because that's representing Christ and his mission in a great way. Fourth way that you can be involved in the mission of Jesus is by inviting. Inviting. Now, this is the simplest and the most effective tool we have in accomplishing the mission of Christ. Uh, we're, we're unapologetic about wanting you to invite your family, your friends, your circle of influence, your coworkers, whoever it is that you rub elbows with on a regular basis, we want you to invite them to come to church with you. Notice I said with you. And, and the reason is this. Statistics, depending on which ones you read, say that somewhere between 60 and 80% of unchurched people actually say they would attend church with a friend or family member who invited them. Now, a lot of you may be like me when I would invite my friends to church uh, when I was younger. I got no, 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 no. Yeah, they just would tell me no. I just keep inviting them. And eventually some of them would say yes. And I saw God change their lives because eventually they said yes. I, I, I call it harassing people into the kingdom. But um, <laughs> here's the thing. If we're inviting, we're inviting God to work through us. So who do you know that's the last person in the world you ever expect to see in church? Invite them and pray for them. 
Because I look around here and I know enough stories in this room that there's several of you, if not many of you, that were the last person anyone expected to see in church at one point in your life. And yet here you are and God has changed your life. And if you invite your friends, God can change their lives too. We believe it. We've seen it happen. We know it can happen. So uh, just invite. Be like Andrew in the Bible who brought his brother Simon to, to Jesus. He said, come and see. This could be the Messiah. Just, that's all you're saying is come and see. By the way, you guys know and, uh, P, uh, Simon better by the name Apostle Peter, right? You know him. It's because his brother invited him. Be that way and let's invite people. That's the fourth way. The fifth way that you can be a part of the mission of Christ at Calvary is telling your story. I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we love to tell stories of life change here at Calvary. We love to ex just share how God has taken our broken messes of rebellion and turned them into beautiful pictures of life change. And, and, and if you've got a great story, I, I have people all the time say, hey, you, I, I think you want to hear my story. Yes, I want to hear your story. Sometimes I want to tell your story too. Uh, that's a little more intimidating. Some of you are like, I'll tell you my story if you don't make me tell my story to everybody. Okay, it's a deal for now. Uh, and, uh, but... But here's the thing, some of you are comfortable sitting down with family or with friends over coffee and telling them how God has changed your life. See, it's not an argument about doctrine or about, you know, the world and everything. It's just simply saying, here is what God has done for me. And, and some of you have powerful stories of life change and you're good at telling those. And praise God you are because you're making a difference in people's lives. And then the last way that, that you can lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus is actually sharing the gospel. Some of you uh, are comfortable with this classic evangelism, which is asking questions and, and sharing scripture and, and inviting people to pray to trust Jesus. In, in, uh, now, statistically, only about three to five percent of Christians are comfortable doing this. And uh, that's why I call it classic evangelism, because when I grew up, that was the only evangelism that counted. If you weren't doing that, you weren't really serving Jesus, and I think that's crazy. I love the people who do this, uh, but there's not a lot of you, but those of you that do it, awesome. In fact, we have a group, I say we, uh, uh, Don Klostermeyer has a group that go, meets on Friday nights to go out and just witness to people on the street. Uh, if you wanna be a part of that, he called me, it's called Team 10, is that right, Don? Team 10, so uh, he's over there, so if you got questions, find him afterwards, he'll be glad to take you along with him and train you and unleash you. But uh, look, that's a way that some of you are comfortable in sharing the gospel of Jesus and leading people to a life-changing relationship with him. So that's six ways. Six ways that you can be involved in the mission of Christ at Calvary. And that all of it is not at the church. I hope you heard that. A lot of it is outside the walls and interacting with people. So how many ways are you helping to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus? Uh, I, and, and can I just be honest? This is where I really want you and God to have a conversation this week. Because some of you are like, yeah, good sermon, good sermon, good sermon. Uh, and you look down at your list, and if you're honest with God, you're only involved in one way or nominally. And you know, because the Holy Spirit's telling you, hey, I want you to be involved this way. I want you to be involved this way. I want you to be involved this way. Look, however you're involved in leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, thank you. But here's what I know. Jesus is calling us to do more. There's 40,000 plus unchurched people in Havasu, 5,000 plus unchurched people in Parker, and billions of unchurched people around the world. God wants to use us to change our corner of the world. So who are you going to invite? How are you going to serve in the community, in the church? Who are you going to tell your story to? Who are you going to share the good news that Jesus forgives sin with? What are you going to do Hey, look, if you've got none of those ways as part of your life, then pick one and step into it. If you've got two or three, ask God if he wants you to do more. All I know is, unless we serve Christ as a team, we won't see the victory in our church. We won't see the victory in our communities. And I want us to see the power of God unleashed because of our obedience, taking the mission of Jesus seriously. After all, Jesus did everything to accomplish his mission to save us, to save you. So what will you do to help accomplish his mission today? Let's pray. Father, we love you.
We're amazed that you love us because you know our hearts, you know the rebellion that is there. Even right now, we need your grace because we're sinners and, and we desperately need the grace of God. So Father, meet us in this room. Speak to our hearts in, in powerful, uncomfortable ways because you want to use every single one of us to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Father, I thank you for the, the faithful servants here at Calvary that have been participating in this mission because we see the life change happen over and over and over again, and we praise you for that. But God, you want so much more for this community. You want so much more for Parker. You want so much more for the ends of the earth. And so we surrender to you, asking that you would demonstrate your power and your grace in our lives like never before so that we can... See the victories for Team Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.